There is a saying, if you don't track, you won't grow. But the thing about Google Analytics is that even if you track, you might not know how to interpret the data because there are just too many things to look at. So in this video, our goal is to help you navigate through your Google Analytics accounts, including the setup and installation, so that after this video, you'll feel confident using Google Analytics to assess your business and website's performance. Take note that this tutorial is WordPress specific, so if you are ready, let's get started. Hey, it's Jack from RankMap, the one tool that provides easy to use SEO and AI tools. And this channel provides you with tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you grow your search traffic. So if you're new to us, consider subscribing. Anyway, let's get started with the Google Analytics setup. So we will start everything from scratch. We will connect this completely new website to a completely new Google Analytics account. To start, let's visit Google Analytics through this link, analytics.google.com. Make sure that you are signed into the Google account that will be managing the analytics and click on start measuring. You'll first need an account name. Google Analytics allows you to track multiple websites under one single account. So if you have multiple businesses with different names, you can group them up and name it for easier reference. For example, XYZ Group, XYZ Enterprise Web Properties or whatever. But for simplicity's sake, since I can own multiple websites, I'll just name the account as Jack's Websites. Feel free to add your website name if you want to. Next, in the account data sharing settings, if you want to help Google improve their search experience, add displays and everything else, by checking this, you are allowing Google to collect anonymous data from your account. But this benefits you as well, as you will have additional data from the enhanced demographic and interest reporting. This is totally optional, but I'll check this. For the rest of the options, you should keep them checked to get the most out of Google Analytics. Let's click next. And here you will need to set up a property. Remember we said that in one account, you can track many different properties. Now you are creating that property to track. And since we want to track this totally new website and a domain name for this site is my plugin store, that's what I will add as the property name. For the reporting time zone, it determines the time frame for which your website traffic data is displayed in reports. In other words, the data cutoff point for each day depends on the time zone you have selected. So you should set it to best reflect your target audience or business operations. Since I live in Singapore and my business follows the Singapore time zone, I will select that. And then the currency. You should set this based on your business accounting standard. So if I run a company and it reports the profits in Singapore dollars, I will select that. But if it reports in US dollars, then I will select that instead. This is more for convenience if you understand accounting. Let's click next. Now in this step, Google is trying to learn about your business or website. So simply select the industry you are in. If you can't find a suitable industry, then you can select other business activity. And then how big is your business? If you run the website on your own, then it will be one to 10 employees. Otherwise you will select appropriately. Let's click next. It's time to choose your business objectives. Select any or a combination of these options. Allow Google Analytics to tailor the platform to your specific goals. The generate leads option is ideal for businesses that rely on capturing user information for sales and marketing purposes. For example, real estate agencies, lead generation websites, law firm, or any service-based businesses. If you select this, Google Analytics will prioritize reports that track user engagement with lead capture forms, landing pages, and contact information submissions. Then if your focus is on driving online sales, like an e-commerce store, you can select both generate leads and the drive online sales option. Then if you select the raise brand awareness option, it means you want to understand how your brand is perceived online and how users discover your website. Google Analytics will prioritize reports on website traffic sources and user demographics. And then the examine user behavior option is suitable if you want to understand how users navigate your website. So you can select all these objectives if they suit your business or website. But you cannot combine any of these options with the Get Baseline reports. If you select this, it means you are not specifying a specific objective. All you need is just a basic set of reports on website traffic and user behavior. But for most of us, I presume we'll be selecting all these specific objectives instead of the baseline reports. Let's click Create. You will need to select the country where your business resides and accept their terms of service by checking these two boxes before you can use Google Analytics. And now the account and property are created. And since we are collecting data from our website, we will be selecting web. 
and then you will need to provide your site URL here. But remember to remove your web protocol as it is already defined here. And if your site is set up with www. you want to make sure to add it as well. But for our site, it is just the domain name. Then give the tracking stream a name, say your site's name. And most importantly, you want to keep this enhanced measurement option on so that Google Analytics will track all these other variables on your site. The page view is given, this is by default. It can also track scroll events, outbound clicks, which are clicks that lead your visitor away from your site, track the search queries people type into the search bar of your site, capture form interactions, video engagement, and file downloads. Feel free to uncheck any of these events if you do not want Google Analytics to track them. Let's click save, and now let's create the stream. Once the stream is created, it's time to install the Google Analytics code on your site. Alright, there are two options to install Google Analytics. One is to install Google Analytics using one of the supported platforms. In our case, it could be the SiteKit plugin, the WooCommerce plugin, or if you are hosting your site on one.com, you can select that option. The other option is to install Google Analytics manually by accessing your site's codes and paste this code within the head tag of your site. You can also install Google Analytics using Google Tag Manager. We have created a tutorial on Google Tag Manager and if you're interested in checking it out, it is right here. We have left the link in the description as well. Anyway, there is a much simpler option to install Google Analytics, which does not involve meddling with your site's codes or installing an additional plugin. That is if you have installed Rank Math on your site. I'll walk you through this option first before going into the others. So on your WordPress dashboard, hover to Rank Math SEO, select General Settings. Following that, click on the Analytics tab. You will now have to connect your site with Google and Rank Math. Click on this button. If you have a Rank Math account, you want to first log in. And now you want to sign in with the Google account where you have created the analytics earlier. Click Continue. And now you want to check all these to allow Rank Math to do its job properly. If you are a Rank Math Pro user, there are more options like creating a new Google Analytics account along with its default property and view, edit Google Analytics management entities, and view your AdSense data. Take note that RankMath does not store any of your data. It will just collect the data from your Google account and store it on your web hosting server so that your privacy is protected. RankMath will then use the data stored on your server and display information on the analytics module in RankMath. Anyway, check all these permissions and click continue. And now you can see that the search console is connected to your site even though you have not done anything yet. And then for the analytics, this is the account, the property, and the data stream you have created earlier. You can also create a new property directly from the RankMath settings if you need to. And then we can install the analytics code for you automatically. And if you have RankMath Pro, you can anonymize IP addresses to protect the privacy of your site visitors, self-host analytics JS file to speed up your site, and exclude login users from the analytics data so that the information would not be skewed. That's for installing Google Analytics with RankMath. Now let's walk you through installing Google Analytics using the SiteKit plugin. All right, we are back at the Google Analytics setup. In case you have accidentally closed this, you can click on your data stream again and click on view tag instructions and you will see the installation instructions again. So using this CMS option where CMS means content management system, click select your platform, then select the SiteKit plugin. There are some instructions you can follow, but let me walk you through the process. What you need to do is to copy this tag ID, go to your WordPress site, hover to plugins, and select add new plugin. And then on a the search bar, you want to search for SiteKit. This is the plugin developed by Google. So you want to install and activate it. Once activated, you want to refresh your page and right at the top, you will see the SiteKit on a menu. You want to go to its dashboard, then check this, and sign in with Google. Similarly, you want to sign in with the Google account where you have set up the analytics. Click continue. Then you want to allow SiteKit to assess your Google Analytics data, view your Google Tag Manager container if you have set it up, manage your search console data, as well as the list of sites you control, and click continue. You will now need to verify the ownership of your site with Google. We have already verified it earlier when we use RankMath. And even if you have not verified your site, it is just a click away. You will click verify instead of next. So don't worry about missing any steps in between. Click next. Then you will need to allow SiteKit to display data on your dashboard. And if you have not connected your site with Google Search Console, Google can help you set it up. 
And finally, install Google Analytics. Right now, your site is connecting with Google Analytics and done. This is the account, the property, and the stream we have created earlier. Click on this button to complete the setup and we are done. All right, if you don't want to install Google Analytics using RankMath or add an additional plugin on your site, then the final option will be to install it manually. So click on the Install Manually option. You will need to copy this code by clicking on this and paste it within the head element of your site. So let's head over to your WordPress dashboard. For some themes, you will have access to your site's codes by hovering over Appearance and select Theme File Editor. And then this is just to notify you that your site may break if you don't understand what you're doing, but this is something simple. And then over on the right, under the theme files, you want to look for header.php. And then find a head tag, which is right here. You just need to add the Google Analytics codes within the start and the end of the head tag, but don't add it in between any codes or it will break your site. So you will add it either at the top where you will hit enter or return to add some space and paste the codes here. If not, right before the head tag, you want to give it some space and paste it here. Once done, click update file, then head back to Google Analytics and test your website. If the code is detected on your site, you will see this. All right, that's for setting up Google Analytics and connecting it to your site. Now, let me walk you through the Google Analytics user interface. So when we first log into our Google Analytics account, this is what we will see. And before we work on anything, we need to make sure that we are on the right account and property. For us, since we have only created one account and one property, it is rather straightforward. But for you, you may have multiple accounts and properties, so you have to select the correct one. Anyway, we are on the Google Analytics demo account. I will use this so it's much easier to navigate. Now, if we navigate to the left, you will see four options. The Home tab, which is what you're looking at right now. It will give you an overview of everything that is happening on your site. The Reports tab provides you with deeper insights so that you can analyze the activities and user behavior. And then the Explore tab allows you to customize the data so that they are tailored to your business needs. And if you run Google Ads, you can link it to Google Analytics to help you understand the effectiveness of your marketing efforts across different channels. So in this video, we'll focus on the Home tab and the Reports tab because going into the Explore tab and Advertising tab will quickly become confusing as it is for more advanced users. We'll create another video to walk you through these powerful tools. Anyway, in the Home tab, you will see this data graph that displays all the noteworthy information at a glance. By default, Google Analytics will show the data for the past seven days. You can change it according to your needs. It will also show the number of users, which is basically the total number of users unique individuals who interacted with your site or app within the selected time frame. So if a person visits your website every single day for the past seven days, it will only be counted as one user as it is tracking unique individuals. And then these key events are important events that you are tracking and you have to define what events are supposed to be key events. To do that, you have to navigate to the admin. Under data display, and events, you see these are the events we are tracking and to mark an event as a key event, there is this toggle here. You just have to toggle the relevant event on. This is a demo account, so we can't make changes here, but on a live account, you will be able to toggle any event as a key event. So when you toggle any of these on, the data will be captured and displayed on your home tab right here. So if the key event is the number of form signups, then at a glance, you will know this number of people completed a form on your site over the past seven days. And then by default, the third data is the new users, which refers to the number of unique individuals who visited your website or app for the first time within the chosen date range. And the event count means the total number of times events were triggered on your site within the selected date range. Personally, I don't find this event count data useful at a glance. I would prefer to change this to something else. I mean, this is totally up to you. You can customize whatever data here so that at a quick glance, you will get immediate information. So personally, I would change this event count by hovering over it and then a drop down arrow will appear. You want to click on it. And as you can see, these are the suggested data to view at a glance, which I think some of them are quite useful, but it really depends on your personal preference. I like to display engaged sessions. 
Now, Google Analytics qualifies an engaged session as a user who spends at least 10 seconds on a website or app or triggers an event such as a button click, video plays, form submissions, etc., or visit at least two or more pages. A user who does one of the three, Google Analytics will count it as an engaged session. So the engaged sessions data is so much better than looking at just the total sessions as a whole because it filters out those low quality visitors. And by doing that, you can use this as a benchmark performance as well as better understand user behavior. Also for me, I would substitute the users with new users because I only want to know if my site is growing for the past seven days. And I will also substitute these new users with engaged sessions per user. Technically, if you do it my way, my goals are to track the growth of my website as well as its engagement. So you need to know what your goals are so that you can tailor the data card according to your needs. Then on the right, you have a glimpse of the real-time data and where your visitors are coming from. Below that, you have all the data cards you have recently assessed Following that, you have a section that displays all the suggested data cards. These are popular data cards across everyone who uses Google Analytics, and it also includes cards that you have viewed recently. And then you will have the insights and recommendations. Google Analytics will generate the insights based on the data they have collected. Currently, we do not see the insights here, but there should be a link right above here that says view all insights. And when you click on it, it will show you their insights and recommendations. All right, we have covered everything about the home tab. Now let's go to the reports tab. So this report section goes beyond the quick data snapshots in the home tab. It allows you to drill down into specific metrics and user behavior. I will run you through each tab, starting with the report snapshot. So on the report snapshot, the first thing you will see is the user activity report. You will see the total number of active users, which is similar to the data we see on the home tab, the number of new users, average engagement time, and the total revenue. But take note that the default date range selected for this data is the last 28 days, while it was seven days in the home tab. Now we can obviously change the date range by clicking on it. These are the preset date ranges you can use, and you can customize the data you need by clicking on the date. The first click is to set the start date, and the second click sets the end date, and click apply. Also, you can compare two sets of data to know how your site has performed over the two periods. So to set the compare range, let's say for the main data here is for April 2024, we want to compare it to March 2024. So we will click on first March, which is the start date, and then the second click will be on March 31st, which sets the end date. As you hit apply, in the graph, you will see the solid line as the main data and the dotted line as the comparing data. The comparison data will be applied to the rest of the data cards below as well. We will go through them one at a time. So from here, we can ask yourself or your team, why is there a sudden increase of users between 21st of April to the 30th of April while the rest of the days are constant? So you try to make sense of the data you are presented with. And then this data is for users. If you click on new users, a different set of data will appear. The same goes for the average engagement time and revenue. And then similar to the home tab, you will have real-time data showing you the number of users in the last 30 minutes and which country the users are coming from. If you click on the view real-time link, it will lead us to the data in the real-time tab, which I will walk you through in a while. For now, let's go back to the report snapshot. Let's close this. Next, we have the insights similar to the one you see on the home tab. The next data card shows where your new users are coming from based on the different traffic sources. This group of users found you directly. Maybe they have typed your domain name directly on their browser, such as rankmath.com and hit enter. That is considered direct traffic. And since we have turned on the comparison period, we will see two bars here. The darker bar is the main data, which is from April 1st to 30th of April. And the lighter bar is from March first to March 31st. It seems that there is an increase in new users in April, while there is a 7.5% drop in organic search traffic. Organic search means this group of people typed the search term on the search engines and found your website by clicking through the search results. And when someone comes to your site by clicking a link from another website, it is considered a referral traffic. 
Paid search is like traffic from Google Ads. Organic social are traffic from social platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, etc. Then traffic from organic shopping are users coming from Google-owned platforms like the Google Shopping tab. And organic video are traffic coming from video platforms like YouTube, Vimeo, etc. Next, what are your top campaigns? You will notice there are some similar traffic sources like the organic and referral. But take note that this assess the new user's data while this assess the number of sessions. There is a big difference between these two. As you know, new users are unique individuals who have visited your page during the selected time period. And even if they visit your site again, it is still counted as one. However, for sessions, if the same individual visited your website a couple of times, say seven times, during this period of time, the number of sessions counted will be seven. And then for this none you see in the sessions metric, it means Google Analytics couldn't identify the source or mean medium that brought the user to your website. Maybe some tracking tags are not working. And if we didn't turn on the comparisons, we will not see these percentages here. From this data, we can see a huge increase in the referral traffic and we need to find out why so that we can capitalize on that. And there is a huge drop in these traffic as well. And you have to identify what are the main causes for that. Next, you will see users from different countries coming to your site. The data over here is sorted by the most users to the least. And if you check out the map overlay, those countries that are highlighted in darker shades are countries with the most users visiting your site. You can change this to new users by country or returning users by country. Similarly, these percentages are as a result of turning the comparison range on. Then we have the user activity over time. This is a handy tool for gauging overall traffic trends to see if your site is growing, declining or stagnant over the past 30 days, 7 days and 1 day. Okay, this comparison period is not exactly useful because we are comparing 30 days to 31 days. So in the last day, there is no comparison data. So let's change this to April 1st to 1st May and hit apply. And this is much better. So as you can see, the activity for this site is trending upwards since April 21st, which is a good sign. Maybe you have changed something here. Now, if you hover over the graph, you will see the comparing data. The same goes for the seven days data as well as the one day data. Next, we have a data card that shows us how well we retain our users. As you can see here, based on the all users data, out of the first day visit, 5.2% of users visited our site again in the first week, 3.3% returned in the second week, 2.9% in the third week, and so forth. If you hover over the blue boxes, you will see the actual number of users who return to the site. The graph is structured this way because this is the current week, so we don't have the data for the next week yet. It hasn't happened. The same goes for the week before. It has data for the current week, but not for the next week, and so forth. If you are new to this, it may take you a while to understand why it is structured this way, but I hope my interpretation helps. Next, we have the pages and screens that gets the most views. As you can see, the apparel page is getting the most views, but it has lost 68.4% as compared to March. We need to figure out why. While for the home page, there is a huge increase. It's weird that people are coming to the home page and much lesser people are going into the shop pages. So we need to figure out why. Next, if we scroll down, we will have the top events data card. These are the activities you are tracking on your website. Through analyzing this, you can see what actions or activities your users are most engaged with. For example, if we see found downloads events as one of your top events, it may mean that your found downloads are popular among your users. But over here, we have view promotion as one of the top events. This could mean that your users are checking out the promotions in April instead of going to your shop category pages. And if you'd like to see more events, you can click on this. Next, we have the top performing key events. As you already know, key events are set by you. They are usually the events that aligns with your business goals. Over here, there are 17K views on specific product pages, which is a drop of 56.7%. As compared to March, lesser people are adding to cart, purchases have slumped. So comparing these two data, it could mean that people are viewing your promotion, but they are not purchasing. So as you can see, without the comparing period, it is hard to make sense of any of the data here, am I right? Next is the list of top selling products. 
Following that, if you are tracking different platforms, such as mobile app activity, you can compare the performance of different platforms. But here we are only tracking the web, so there is not much to take away from this. Then for this LTV, which means lifetime value, which also means the total revenue a customer generates for your business throughout their relationship with you. It considers not only the initial purchases, but also repeat business and the customer's overall value over time. It makes sense that email is one of the channels that bring in the most LTV. All right, if we head back to the top, instead of just comparing the performance of the time period, you can further customize the comparing data by clicking on this. Let's say that you want to compare the data from direct traffic to all users. As you hit apply, you will see your direct traffic compared to all users. This applies to all data cards as well. So you can definitely make sense of whatever information is presented here. But there is a limitation. You can only compare up to four sets of data at one go. Anyway, right beside the edit comparisons button, you can share this analytics report by copying this link and send it over to maybe your team or consultant. Next, right beside the share button, you have the insights. Let's say that I want to learn more about the demographics of my site visitors. We can click on it and there are a couple of questions here. You can select one of the questions like what countries do my users come from or what are the top cities by users. Let's click on that and Google Analytics will quickly provide you with the insights. Click on suggested questions to go back. So this insights function is a great way to get quick information from your Google Analytics. You can also get insights by clicking on the search bar here. And as you can see, there is this Ask Analytics Intelligence section. You can ask what platforms are used the most and it will quickly provide the answer to you. Let's say I want to know how many users there is this year and you get immediate answers. And if, for example, your boss or coworker throws a curveball at you asking you, what pages do people in the US visit? I want to answer right now. So you'll type that in and you will see this inside suggestion here. Click on that and you will get immediate answers making you look good. All right, that's the reports snapshot. Now let's go to the real-time reports. So now we are on the real-time reports. As you can see, currently there are 32 users in the last 30 minutes, and this number will constantly change. 42.4% of users over the last 30 minutes came to our site on a desktop, 33.3% by tablet, and 24.2% by mobile. And then there is this user by first user source, which provides insights into the original channels through which users discover your website for the very first time. There are seven users coming to our site directly in the past 30 minutes. Then if we switch the data to first user medium, Instead of showing you where the users come from, it categorizes them based on the medium. For example, organic, paid ads, organic social, etc. While the first user source will show you the platform. For example, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, or whatever. And then users by audience shows you all the users over the past 30 minutes who are recently active users, who are engaged users, and have added to cart but have not purchased a product. And then we saw this in the report snapshot where it shows us the views by page title and screens, but this is in real time. The same goes for the event counts by event name, as well as key events. All these data are real time data for the past 30 minutes. And then if you want to view the events triggered by each user, you can click on view user user snapshot and you will see that this user has triggered the view promotion event in the last 30 minutes where this person is coming from what time did they trigger the event we can click on this to view the activity of another user we can see this person from canada has triggered the view promotion event so you can basically see what your users are doing in real time all right now let's go to the life cycle reports under the lifecycle report, there are acquisitions, which will show you how your site visitors are finding your site. And then the engagement report, which tracks what your visitors are doing on your site. The monetization report tracks users buying behavior. And then for retention, it is all about tracking how well you are attracting existing users back to your site. Let's start with acquisition overview. You will see a chart that shows you the data for all users, as well as new users. Similarly, like the home tab, we can change the date range. Let's say we change it to March, hit apply. And now, as you can see, it shows that from March 24th to March 28th, there are anomalies detected. Something was wrong during this period of time, but the issue was fixed on March 29th. And then there is a data card for real-time users. 
than users who came to your website through these mediums. If you click on this user acquisition link, it will lead you to the user acquisition report. Then this is the report by sessions. If you click on this link, it will lead you to the traffic acquisition report. So this tracks your users while this tracks your sessions. And then if you run Google ads, you will see some data here. So all these data cards here takes information from these three reports. Let's check out user acquisition. Over here, it shows that the direct traffic is the main source of traffic. Maybe this site is a well-known site. That's why people are visiting the site directly on their browser. Then organic search is the second largest source of traffic. Now, if we scroll down, we will have a breakdown of the traffic sources. From here, we can see that the traffic sources that brings the most highly engaged users are the organic search traffic, as well as organic social and email, organic shopping as well. And out of all these traffic sources, the direct and organic search traffic accumulated the most event counts, as well as the key events, whatever that is you have specified, and they brought in the most revenue. Now, if we go to the traffic acquisition report, you will notice that most of the track events are similar. So what exactly is the difference between these two reports? So the user acquisition report shows you information on new users only, while the traffic acquisition report shows you the activities for all users over the time period. So if you want to find information about new users, you go to user acquisition. And if you want to analyze all traffic data about your site, you go to traffic acquisition. And then the user acquisition cohorts report is more for sites that sell stuff as they show the buying behavior of new users categorized by their medium. Now let's go to the engagement overview. So over here, we see the average engagement time. In March, there are some anomalies. It went from about a minute to a couple of seconds. On the last day of March, it was only five seconds. But what happens in April? Let's check it out. Over here, it still stays within a couple of seconds for an extended period. And suddenly from April 29, the engagement time shot back to 42 seconds. So as a data analyst, you want to try to figure out what happened between the end of March to the end of April. And then right beside it, we have the real-time report that shows the top pages and the number of users visiting in the last 30 minutes. And then the views and event counts during the selected time period, event count by event name. These are all the top track events. And if you want to view the full report, you can click on this link and it will bring you to the events report. Now, let me close this up. Now, if we scroll down, we will see the pages with the most views. Similarly, if you click on this link, it will bring you to the pages and screens report. And then the user activity over time. We saw this in the home tab. It was taking information from this engagement overview report. And finally, the user stickiness data card, which helps you understand how well your website or app retains users by comparing their engagement over different time frames. DAU means daily active users against MAU, which means monthly active users. A high ratio would mean a strong daily engagement and user stickiness. And then WAU means weekly active users. For weekly active users against monthly active users, if there is a high ratio, it suggests that users are returning at least once a week. All right, let's go to the events report. Over here, you can see graph representations of the performance of your top events. And right below it, you will see the event names, the event count, total users, and the ratio of event count per user. You can expand the rows and you will see all the track events on your site. When we do a separate video for more advanced users, we will show you how to create custom event tracking so that you can fully utilize this report. And then let's go to the pages and screens report. It will show you the top pages with the most views together with their engagement time. For bloggers, if you find any page that has a low average engagement time, you need to investigate what is happening on the page. Now over here, it seems like these two pages are triggering key events the most. If this is not intended, then you gotta check out what is happening. Most likely, these are the two most popular products on your site. And now let's visit the landing page report. This report provides insights into the performance of individual pages users first visit on your website. In other words, the first page your visitors land on. So we can click on this to sort the top or worst performing pages in terms of engagement time per session. This way you will know which are the worst performing pages and you can work on them. Now let's go to the monetization overview report. 
This is especially useful for e-commerce stores. You will see the total revenue, total purchases, average purchase revenue per user, the items purchased, the performance of your promotions, if they are coupon used, in-app purchases if there are any, or in the selected time period. What is most useful in the monetization report is the purchase journey. It will show you the number of people who landed on your site, the percentage of people who drop off the site. So out of 52,000 users, 86.7% of them drop off. The remaining are 7,300 users who viewed a product page. Let me close this off so you can see the description. And out of the 7.3K users, 90.9%, .9%, which is 642 of them, added a product to cart. And out of the 642 users, only 69 of them begin checkout. So through this purchase journey, you can find ways to optimize each step of the way. Then at the bottom, it categorizes the users by the device they use. So for example, if you are seeing a huge difference in numbers, maybe only desktop is bringing in sales. If you are running ads, you may want to stop spending money on mobile advertising. But in this case, both mobile and desktop advertising are good options. Then after the purchase journey, it is not the end. You have the checkout journey. It will show you the drop-off rate at each step until the final purchase. So if there is a huge drop-off rate through the checkout journey, you may want to visit your checkout pages and understand what is causing people not to buy your product. And then the promotions report will track the performance of the promotions you run during the time period. And now to the final report in the life cycle, which is the retention report. It will show you the number of new users as well as the number of returning users. What is most useful is this user retention data cut. It shows that only 3% of all users return to the website from day two and the returning rates fall off over time. This gives you a good sign that you should work on your email marketing to get people back to your site. There is no point in growing new users if they don't come back to your site. Am I right? So this is telling me that email marketing is the solution to improve the user retention. All right. We will not talk about the search console. We have a separate video for that. If you are interested in learning some unique ways to analyze your data from your search console, you can check out this video. The link is in the description. And finally, we have the user reports. It will tell you which country your users are coming from in real time, the top cities, the gender of your audience, the interests of your audience. This is great data if you are running ads, the age information and the language as well. These are good data for running ads. Then the demographic details, sorts your data by country and it will show you the user data, the engagement, together with the events and revenue. So if you want to see country specific data, you will come to the demographic details report. As for the audiences report, it shows you the track audiences with their session activity and revenue. You can manage this set of audiences by going to the admin tab under the data display and audiences. These are all the audiences you are tracking. You should be able to see a new audience button here to create a new audience. This is the demo account, so we have no control over it. Let's head back to the reports. And finally, the tag. It will show you all the operating systems your audience are using to visit your site, the platform they use, the browser, device category, screen resolutions, so you can optimize your content for them. And finally, if you are tracking the data from a mobile app, you will have the data here. So with this basic Google Analytics tutorial, I hope you are now confident in navigating Google Analytics. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments. And how about helping us out by smashing that thumbs up? If you haven't subscribed to us, we are all about sharing with you insights and tutorials in the world of digital marketing. This is Jack from Rank Math. I'll see you in the next video.